Hello everyone. Welcome to this team's webinar on understanding capital asset pricing model. First, brief introduction about Pristine. Pristine is leader in training for finance. It is authorized by the CFA Institute, the Graf Institute, the Ping Institute. We have the experience of ser serving the market client list, which includes the JP Morgan, Bank of America, Ansonia, and many others. So, first of all, the topic for today is understanding capital asset pricing model. In this topic, we will discuss about the following subtopics, which are capital market line, security market line. Then we'll finally discuss the capital asset pricing model. We'll apply capital asset pricing model to performance measurement and we'll discuss uh, ratios like the Sharpe's ratio, Trainer ratio. And at the end, we'll discuss some questions which are relevant to FRS examination. So to understand capital asset pricing model, the first thing is to decide how efficient portfolios are constructed. I will demonstrate this with the help of an example. I have already prepared an Excel sheet for it. For example, suppose that you have two different assets, asset A and asset B, and you know the returns and the standard deviation of both assets. So for example, for asset A, the return is 10% and uh, the standard deviation is a which is basically the measure of the risk is 12%. And for asset B, this return is 15% and the standard deviation is 18%. So we have taken different weights of asset A and asset B. So for example, if I have written one year, it means that we have taken 100% asset A and 0% asset B in our portfolio. So for example, this means 90% asset A and 10% as will be in our portfolio. So for our portfolio, with different base of asset A and asset B, we have calculated the standard deviation as well as the return of our portfolio. The standard deviation of the portfolio is calculated by using this formula, which is that vari uh, variance of the portfolio is equal to weightage of that asset in the portfolio squared multiplied by the standard variance of that asset. Similarly, for the other assets, we do the same. And we also need to know the correlation between the two assets to find out the variance or the standard deviation of the portfolio. So by using this formula, we have calculated the standard deviation of the portfolio for all the different Base. And the return of the portfolio can be calculated, it's a linear function. So for example, if the weight of asset A is 90% and weight of asset B is 1%, so the return is calculated by 90.9 into 10%, that would be equal to 9% plus 0.1 into 12%, that would be equal to around So it will, be, it will come around. 10.2%. So this is the this is the way we have calculated the return as well as the standard deviation for different weights of asset A and asset B in the portfolio. Once we got the standard deviation of the return of different weights of asset A and asset B in the portfolio, we have plotted a curve. We have selected this data and we have just used the scatter plot given in the Excel and we have curved at the following, we have arrived at the following curve. A very interesting feature of this curve is that that for a given level of standard deviation, that is risk, you have two different returns. So for example, if we are taking this 15% risk of standard deviation, then we have two different returns, one given by this blue color and the other given by this purple color. 
to the return which is lying on the upper half is favorable because it is higher than the return which is lying on the lower half. So as a smart investor, you will always choose those weights of asset A and asset B that will give you higher return. So this, this, uh, this part of the curve is known as efficient frontier because it is giving you higher return at the same level of risk. So moving forward, so this is about the capital market line. So you can do better than efficient frontier if you make some investment in risk free way. So, so suppose that you have made certain investment in a portfolio that is optimum, you can still get even higher returns by investing certain amount in risk free assets. So that is represented by the capital market line. So in the capital market line, we draw a phase tangent from the from this point, which is the risk free rate, which could be anything, it's like 4% to 8%, generally hovers around that figure. So, from this point, if you draw it tangent to this curve, you will get a capital market line. The point at which this line will touch the curve is. is the point of the standard deviation of the market. So this line is represented by the falling formula. So in this case, then you are RS minus RF, which is the difference of the return given by your portfolio and the risk free rate is the premium that you are getting because of taking certain risks. So now we'll discuss about two different types of risk that is diversifiable risk and systematic risk. So the systematic risk is the risk that is inherited in the entire market. You cannot diversify this risk. And the diversifiable risk is the risk which you can sort of eliminate or minimize by investing prudently in different types of assets. For example, in this case, in this case, we can see that if we take different weights of asset A and asset B, so we can get it the standard deviation as 12%, which is the standard deviation of asset A, but if we try different mix of asset A and asset B, we can reach a point where we can have a optimum return as well as standard deviation as well as risk that we that we are willing to take to measure the risk of a stock we have a term called beta and beta this beta is measure of the risk and it is given by the following formula. It is the covariance between the stock return and the market return divided by the variance of the market return. We will explore this term beta more and this beta term is very critical when it comes to finding the return of the stock. So the capital asset pricing model gives us the return of the stock based on the risk free weight and beta of the stock and the market risk premium demanded by the investors. There are certain assumptions of the capital asset pricing model which is very important. The first assumption is that all assets are infinitely divisible. Actually this assumption is really impractical because this assumption tells us that we can uh, deal in fraction of shares which is not true. Another other assumption of capital asset pricing model, model is that the 
borrow and lender stamp get money at risk free rate which is not always the case another impractical assumption of the capital asset pricing model is that there is no tax no transaction cost and no market part and all the market participants are price takers so this is a very important step from formula that we need to keep in mind to we'll go through some questions which which will help us in remembering this and understanding this formula more clearly so in this question we have been given the beta of the stock right it is 0.8 and the expected return of the stock which is 14% The risk free rate is also given. We have to calculate the market risk premium. So we'll use the capital formula, which is use the capital formula, which is the return of the stock is equal to risk free rate. Plus beta into market risk premium, which is the difference between the return of the market and risk premium. So the return of the stock is given as 14 percent. The risk premium is 6 percent. Beta is 0.8. Market risk premium we have to calculate. Let me denote it by a single term that is MP. So using substituting this value, we'll get market risk premium as 10 percent. We also need to calculate the return of the market. The two ways of doing it. First is that we can take as R M minus R F. That is the market premium, which is 10 percent. So your return of market will be 10 percent plus risk free rate, which is 6 percent. So it will be. 16%. Another way of calculating market return is by noting that the noting the fact that the for the return of the market the beta is one. So beta for a for market will be equal to one. So if we put that in this formula, we'll get the same value of 16%. So now moving forward. So the capital market line gives you the return of the portfolio based on the measure of risk of the portfolio. Similarly, the security market line will give you the return of the stock based on the measure of the risk of the stock, which is beta, as we have already seen. It. So the equation for the security market line, the straight lines, will be given by the equation of the straight line. Is the same as given by the capital model? That is, return of the stock on the vertical axis we have the stock return, and on the horizontal axis where we have the beta of the stock. So the return of the, this, the equation of this line will be return of the stock equal to R F risk free rate plus beta into market premium. So the intercept made by this line on the vertical axis is your risk free rate. The security market line is mapping. It's it's a linear line. It's a linear function which gives you the relationship between the return of the stock and the beta of the stock. So some. How to calculate beta of the stock? I've also prepared an Excel sheet for that. Suppose that you have the market return in the column A. I've taken the market return for the stock, and in the column B, I've taken the stock return. So market return would be like your suppose you have an index, NASDAQ index. So the 
you can calculate the market return by the fluctuation in the NASDAQ index. And the stock return can also be easily figured out. All these data are available in the net on the leading financial reporting sites like Bloomberg. So once we plot a scatter plot and insert a trend line, we get the following equation for the return of the stock. So the return of the stock is plotted on the vertical axis and the market return is plotted on the horizontal axis. The slope of this line will give you the beta of the stock. So in this case, the slope is coming as 0.332. So the beta of the stock is 0.332. So we'll have a question. This question is very important because it explores the concept of whether whether the stock is undervalued or overvalued. So in this case, James Anderson is an analyst. He uses James Anderson is an analyst and he uses Chapel to make buy and sell recommendation. So basically what he does, he first of all he does an analysis of the company based on their balance sheet and the income statement. And he comes at, he values the company, he does the valuation of the company and he comes at an expected rate of return as 12%. But this expected rate of return that is calculated by James from the analysis of the financial statement of the company is different from the one that is predicted by the Kaplan model. This Kaplan model will be used by the investor to calculate their required rate of return. So first we'll use the, so there's two types of beta in this one. There's a historical beta of the ABC company which is calculated by the using the historical data. So James Anderson is not satisfied with by just beta. So he uses another beta which he forecasts by the following formula. So first we'll uh, calculate the forecasted beta. So the forecasted beta is 0.8 into, so 0.8 plus 0.2 into historical beta, which is your 1.5. So your forecasted beta is 1.1. So using the cap on the report, the required rate of return for the stock would be R is equal to RF plus beta into market risk premium which is given as so your RF is 6% plus beta 1.1 into market risk premium is 9. So return of the stock is 15.9%. Since this return that is the return of the stock from the investor's point of view is greater than the return which James has calculated using his analysis which is 12%. So we can conclude that the stock is overvalued because 12% is the rate of return that James has predicted using discounted cash flow model or something. So. So we can conclude that our stock is overvalued. So the correct answer is option B. So now we will discuss some important performance measures. Performance measures are important because we can use this to decide whether our portfolio is efficient or not. So basically performance measure gives you the measurement of your portfolio. So our first performance measure is the sharp ratio. So the sharp ratio 
is given by the following formula. So you have the return of the portfolio. So, uh, you take the difference between the return of the portfolio and the risk free rate and you divide it by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So you higher, so basically this, the numerator is giving you the excess return you are getting over the risk free rate and the denominator is representing the risk that you are inheriting. So basically you want the risk to be low and the return, excess return you are getting over the risk free rate to be high. So hence, higher the return and lower the risk, the better it is for you. So we can clearly understand how this SARP ratio gives us the measurement of our portfolio. Another ratio which is similar to SARP ratio is the Trenner ratio. In this case, we replace the standard deviation of the portfolio by the beta of the portfolio, beta of the stock. So similar, higher the uh, Trenner ratio, better the portfolio. So we'll take an example to understand the Trenner ratio more clearly. So in this question, so actually very simple question to solve if you know the formula of Trenner ratio. If you are aware of the Trenner ratio formula, then this question can be very easy. So I, I, I would suggest that you should go through these formulas because these questions can be very straightforward and there is a high chance that it can come in your FRM exam. So the return of the portfolio. So the return of the portfolio is given as 10%. And the standard deviation of the portfolio is given as 15%. Actually the standard for calculating trenders ratio, we don't need the standard deviation of the portfolio. This data is just given to puzzle you, to confuse you. The beta of the portfolio is 0.75. The risk free rate is 4%. So the final measure is Trenner ratio is very straightforward. We have to take return of the portfolio, difference of the return of the portfolio and the risk free rate, and we have to divide it by the beta of the portfolio. So it comes out to be around 0 0.08, which is option B. Another measure of the portfolio is Sortino ratio. So all these ratios kind of measure the your return versus your risk. So the return part comes on your numerator and your the risk part comes in your denominator. So you always are looking for a higher return and lower risk. So in all these ratios you have seen that your numerator is the measure of your return and your denominator is the measure of risk because you want your risk to be lower and your return to be higher. So it's another measure of portfolio would be your Sortino ratio. So in this case, in, in place of risk free rate, we take a minimum acceptable return and we take a risk difference of that with the 
we take the difference of the return of the portfolio and minimum acceptable return and we divide it by semi-standard deviation. So what we mean by semi-standard deviation is it measures the variability of only those returns that fall below the minimum, minimum acceptable return. So it will be clear by the following question. So in this question we have been given the return of the portfolio for past 5 years. And it has been like 6%, 9%, 4%, and 12%. So first we'll calculate the average return of the portfolio. Average return of the portfolio is 6 plus 9 plus 4 plus 12 divided by 4 and it comes to be 7.75%. We have to calculate second is to calculate standard semi-standard deviation which is calculated like this. So we'll, we are taking 7 because 7 is the minimum acceptable return. We will take this as 0 because in this case, in the second case, 9% is greater than your 7%. So in that case, since we are taking semi-standard deviation, we won't take the difference. We will only take the difference in those cases in which your return of the portfolio is less than the minimum acceptable return. So in this case, it will be 4 minus 7. Once again, this will be zero because the return of the portfolio is greater than your minimum acceptable return. So I divided by four. I've already calculated this, and this comes out to be around 1.58 percent. The important thing to note in any standard deviation is that we take the difference in only those cases where the return of the portfolio is less than the minimum acceptable return. And in case the return of the portfolio is greater than the minimum acceptable return, we will simply take it as zero. So we have seen in today's webinar how capital market line is used to calculate the return of the portfolio based on the rest of the portfolio. One important thing to note is that the rest of the portfolio is given by this quantity, which is the standard deviation of the portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the market. So this is the measure of the risk of the portfolio. So for example, in, in, this, in this case, we have the standard, for example, we have taken the weights as 90% of asset A and 10% of asset B. So our standard deviation of the portfolio is 12.13%. And if we know the standard deviation of the market, of all the stocks in the market, we can get the risk of the portfolio. And then we can use that to plot our capital market line. But in security market line, we find out the return of the stock. In the case of stock, the measure of risk of the stock is the beta, which is calculated by the following formula. 
we take the co-value between the return of the stock and the return of the market and we divide it by the variance of the return of the market. There is another way of calculating it. In Excel, you can do it. You can take the data for the market return. The sample size, in this case, I have taken a small sample size. So, from regression, you will you can recall that our R square value is low in this case. It's only 0.217. So, if you take a higher sample size, then you might get a better R square value. So, because I was illustrating it, so I have taken a smaller sample size. So, in this case, I was explaining that if you have to calculate beta, then you will plot the return of the market on the x-axis, that is the horizontal axis, and the return of the stock on the y-axis, that is the vertical axis. You will plot a scatter plot, you will insert a trend line, and you will look at the slope of the trend line. That slope of the trend line is your beta of the stock. So if you have to if you have to know the beta of the entire market, let me tell you that the beta of the entire market is equal to one. That is because in this formula we can see that the covariance of in place of if we take covariance of return of the market with itself, it will be nothing but the variance of the returns of the market. So this term will be equal to 1. So if you the beta of the stock is greater than 1, that means your stock is riskier than the your, than your market. So which means that if your market, if your market index, suppose that, NASDAQ, it is giving you a If you have a stock of beta greater than 1, that means that your stock is more riskier than your NASDAQ index. Suppose that you have invested in all the stocks of NASDAQ. And if your beta is less than 1, then your stock is less riskier than your entire market. So this was some important points about the beta of a stock. We are following blocks for you. Our experts have written this blog, specially designed for CFA and current preparation. I'll be mailing you this PPD. You can uh, go through this blog and these quizzes. We have a lot of materials, free materials, quizzes designed for you, specially for FRM as well as CFA preparation exam. So you can visit our website and check them out. We also have an upcoming webinar on option valuation, another important topic as far as the FRM exams are concerned. The registration link for that webinar is given in this PPT. You can register for that webinar. It will be happening on It will be happening on Saturday,
We also have a classroom training program in New York coming soon. So this will be a crash course for FRM exams. So if you want to have a quick revision of all the things that you have studied before your exam, you can find this crash course very useful. So if you are interested, you can contact us at the following email ID. I will be mailing you the CPD. So in case you want to get in touch with us. If you have any queries, you can mail me at my email ID. Right? So this brings us to the end of this webinar. We, are, we will be conducting this webinar in the future also. We will be informing you from mails. So it was great interacting with you guys. Thank you for coming to our webinar and looking forward to your presence in our future webinar.